Welcome, everybody, once again to another episode here on the SITRA Podcast. I'm your host, Riskany Jim, and today we're going to do just a really quick, light, very chill hobby stream. We're going to put some finishing touches on some American armor I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. So give me just a second to switch over to my camera. Okay, so here we are with some of the stuff I've been working on lately. Uh, these obviously are M2 Bradleys. That's either the M2 APC or the M3 ACV, Armored Cavalry Vehicle. It really just, uh, there's no real difference externally, at least not immediately impaired at 15 mil. By the way, I guess I should say these are 15 millimeter miniatures from Battlefront originally produced for Team Yankee. Okay, so again, um, the only real difference between those two vehicles, the M2, is uh, at least supposed to be a true armored personnel carrier. I'm not going to get into the whole problem of you know, the whole 1980s armor, or, or, you know, arms appropriation problem. And Okay, never mind about that, because <laughs> they've literally made movies about how much of an APC the M2 APC isn't, but never mind about that. Um, it's an APC. carries two... Tow missiles here in this boom, which is shown in the extended position. This thing is ready to fire, except the little cover is on right now. So that little cover that you see on top there kind of flips open, and then uh, two tow missiles can fire out of there. Um, it carries a couple reloads, but not very many. Mostly it carries six infantry uh, through these doors, uh, or through this door that we see back here. So no worries there. The M3 kind of does the same thing, except it doesn't carry infantry. It usually carries just a lot of extra tow missiles. So the M3 armored cavalry vehicle can stay on station and launch a lot more tow missiles uh, as if the battle turns into a more protracted engagement. So I've gone ahead and um, obviously did not paint these in anything like a Team Yankee, Germany, 1985 kind of a configuration. Um, I went ahead and built these and painted them especially as a 1991 or 2003, like early Iraqi freedom a, a configuration. So the kit does come with different configurations in the box. You can make them in the more modern M2A2 or M3A2 with additional armor plates on the side, uh, also on the glacis, also on the front of the turret. But I went ahead and uh, mostly built this for a uh, Iraq, sorry, uh, mostly built this for a excuse me, um, Desert Storm Force, 1991 Desert Storm, so no worries there. Uh, that was what goes with my now completed M1A1s with 120 millimeter, so I wanted everything to match. This is why everything goes with my old and busted uh, Marine Corps uh, M60A3s and all my LAVs, which I won't pull out, all my Humvees, all my uh, Amtraks, and so on and so forth. Long story short, I've been kind of building a Desert Storm Force. So, I built the kit with, again, I decided to make the boom extended and ready to fire. You have different choices how you can actually build the missile boom. Uh, I went ahead and built it, again, with a 1991 or 2003 armor configuration. After that, I kind of kit bashed some stowage that I had hanging around in my bits box. I also had to scratch build, or I went ahead and scratch build some additional stowage there in the back of the little turret bustle there. No two are the same, because, you know, stowage gets crazy. Um, and again, I didn't have quite the, quite the uniform uh, supplies available in my bit box. Hello, Jen, how you doing? Hello from Maine, she says. Saw a fort built for the battle in, uh, for the battle in 1812, Portland, Maine Harbor today. We'll be passing USS Maine tomorrow. Cool. There's a fair amount of military history in Maine. None of it very good for the Americans. I know the Americans got sort of tuned up in Penobscot Bay. Uh, the British love talking about that, deservedly so. That's the battle where Paul, Paul Revere, the famous Paul Revere, winds up getting uh, court-martialed. Because um, he's a silversmith. He's not even a soldier, much less an admiral. 
you put him in charge of a fleet and send him off to the wilderness to take a fortified British position in a combined arms operation? No, that's not going to work out. Okay, so the kit comes with five M2s, or M3s, whatever. Uh, I'll just say five Bradleys. And they're pretty much done. I might go back and paint these cables a little bit that are hung on the back door. Hope you can see that pretty well there. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Other than that, these are done, with the exception of some transfers. So I'm going to go ahead and put some transfers uh, on these bad boys. So I already have some transfers here soaking in the water. Hopefully they will come off the transfer sheet without too much trouble. I don't know how you guys do transfers. I like to use a nice clean brush to uh, move my transfers around. See if I can do this on camera here. Jen's probably grown or a uh, uh, wincing up there in Maine. She's like, "Oh my God, he's doing transfers live on stream, like the most sometimes stressful thing." And yet, the first one went on there smooth as butter. So you see these chevrons and a lot of U.S. armor throughout both Gulf Wars and it's often like okay which way do they point it uh, depends a couple things number one it depends on the era the rules for how these chevrons go on there are different for 1991 than they are for 2003 and then even going forward into later stages of the second Iraq war or the, the Iraq war if you prefer or the war in Afghanistan and then once you get into those Errors, it often depends on the unit. Sometimes it denotes company, sometimes it denotes um, platoon, like it's always pointing to the left for you know, a given platoon, pointing up for the second platoon, pointing to the right for the third platoon, so on and so forth. Luckily for me, I'm going with 1991 Gulf War. And usually, as far as I can tell, and according to my research, they're always pointing up. This was a, co a coalition wide sort of a marking that was adopted uh, at least for the 1991 war. That rule will not apply for other periods of the, uh, of the Gulf War conflicts, plural. Come on out of there. All right, cool. So the first part is fishing it out of my little uh, water tub here where I've got my uh, transfers soaking a little bit getting ready to come off the transfer sheet all right let me try and do this on camera this time this side is definitely a lot easier than this side I'll tell you I'll, I'll tell you that much for free all right that one went on there fine it's just a little crooked see if I can salvage this let me not try to smooth it out with my finger all right that's not too bad there I probably should have put that higher up in fact you know what let me see if I can lift this off and try to put it on a little higher I don't know if this is gonna work much less on camera Oh yeah, there it goes. Come on, don't be stubborn, just get up there. It's not really symmetrical with the other side, but it's just gonna look better sitting a little higher, I think. Smooth that bad boy out. Here we go. Hello, Walkabout Games. How you doing? Yeah, fun transfers. <laughs> Jen's like, um, sometimes when I'm putting transfers on, I like call over my shoulder when my girlfriend's watching TV. I'm like, I got, 
All right, Jen, a warning. Um, I'm putting on transfer. She's like, okay, I'll turn the volume up. Because that's when uh, the, uh, the, the not safe for, you know, PG language starts flying off from the, the gaming table. And here I am doing it live on stream because why not? Turn around. I feel like I'm delivering a baby. It's not turned right. The head's not coming out. All right. Let me put this one in a slightly. I like them to be uniform, so let me. Uh... and kind of lay it on there, make sure it's nice and smooth. All right, cool. So far, these are behaving pretty well. Ah! Of course, I had to say that, didn't I? This one's being kind of a pain. Alright, let's try this. Alright, this one might not be salvageable. I mean, it's okay, I got plenty of extras. Let me try and put it in the water here. I'm not even going to waste time with that one. This one got folded up underneath it itself a little bit. Alright, let me try to get, grab another one off another sheet. And fortunately, I got plenty of extras. Attempt number two. Here we go. You're going to get folded up underneath yourself, too? Come on, man. Should probably get this on camera better. Yep, the same thing happened again. Look at that. Damn it. This one at least is on the brush correctly. Hey, finally! Third time's a charm. That was slightly annoying. Alright, so that's two of them done with those little chevrons. And yes, they're a little shiny right now. Fortunately, I've got some varnish that I'm going to use to take that shine off there.
Jen says, I'm happy I'm not there to hear the cursing. You might hear some cursing. This may turn into a uh, an NC-17 stream by the time it's all said and done. I hope it doesn't. The last hobby stream was a little rough. So I'm hoping this one, this time the hobby gods take it a little easy on me. So far, they kind of are, to be honest. Putting transfers on isn't that hard. It's just everything gets a little harder when you try to do it live on camera. Ken also says, got to drive on a wine de coastal road. Oh, wait, winding coastal road. Uh, now, so I'm going to turn you off until we get to the hotel. Absolutely no worries, Jen. Please be safe. I'll check back and see if you're still streaming. Um, I don't think I'm going to be on that long today. I know I always say that, but really, literally all I have to do here is transfers. And then these bad boys are done. Oh, this one came off on my finger. Hold on. Boy, these chevrons really love to, to fold back on themselves. This is one of the ones I was trying to save from before. It, it unfolded in the water, and now it just refolded again. So this one might be uh, kind of screwed. Okay, I salvaged it again. Let's see if it sticks this time. All right. Or let's, let's see if my good luck holds. Make sure I'm in camera. Uh, if anyone's still in the chat, um, oh, I dread, uh, here, I walk about games also says, I dread how many transfers I have to do for World War II models in 15 and 28. Yeah, 28 millimeter, you're looking at a lot of transfers. Um, I remember I was doing my 28 millimeter Africa Corps, the number of transfers that went on an Opal Blitz truck. Good God almighty. Of all things, not even like a cool, you know, tank, like an actual just stupid truck. So this is obviously a very different scale. The one thing I liked about how this one kind of turned out is the way I was able to push the transfer into those gaps in the wood. So it looks like it's actually painted on because that, that, that's not a pattern. That's actually separate pieces of plastic to show like the stake bed nature of the truck there. That actually came out, uh, I thought, pretty good. And it's a good transfer that will let you do that. Um, to put it on there and then you know bend it around like a pistol port in the side of a turret or to kind of push it in to the uh the slats in like that steak bed uh kind of a truck there so yeah i mean yeah license plates you got um divisional or regimental insignia national markings um more uh ids more ids any kind of mos like you know obviously this is a medical vehicle there's a lot of stuff that goes on that little, and of course you got to get it right. Otherwise, your local, uh, you know, rivet counter is gonna. Excuse me, sir. Um, just kind of FYI, I wanted you to know. Actually, I got an actually for you. How about I can? You can actually kiss my ass. <laughs> I don't usually make miniatures mistakes, but once in a while I do. 
Speaking of 28 millimeter, if you're a sharp eyed viewer, I probably shouldn't say this. If you're a sharp eyed viewer, you can probably see where I got some of my air quotes stowage from. It's just old German infantry equipment in 28 millimeter. Um, if you paint it a certain way and you slap it on a 50 millimeter vehicle, it almost looks like an Alice pack. Uh, <laughs> at least that's what I'm hoping. I don't know if I'm going to get away with that. Welcome back, Game says, I'm going to be doing a live interview with one of the authors for Force on Force in 90 minutes. Interested in they'll be putting out a PDF for the second edition rules. That'd be cool. Uh, I interviewed uh, Pierce once. I know he was either one of the authors or one of the playtesters. Or both. But, of course, just, you know, one of many. Uh, that was Ambush Alley Games, if I remember correctly. Because it, I mean, originally, I don't know if it's still the same company. Because Ambush Alley, when they first came out with the game, I think the game was called Ambush Alley. Then they came out with Force on Force, and their first supplement for Force on Force was their Vietnam Ambush Valley. Because that's not confusing at all. I don't anticipate being on here, uh, anyway, 90 minutes, uh, walking about games. I really hope I'm not, actually. Uh, that's going to depend on how these transfers treat me, though. There we go. All right. That's me off camera trying to fish it out of the little, uh, finger bowl where it's been soaking to get it off the transfer paper. Just get on the damn vehicle. You adjust that position a little bit. Guys, let me know if I'm too loud or if the music's too loud. Or... I don't think I'm out of focus. I'm watching the screen when I'm not looking at the miniature or the transfer. Sometimes it's hard to judge the sound as well. Okay, that's four of them with transfer so far, uh, with that chevron so far. After that, we have some tactical numbers and then some matte varnish, and that's probably going to be about it. All right, those two transfers that got that were like really bad. I've salvaged one of them. I don't know if I'm going to be able to salvage the other. It's sitting in the water now, trying to flatten itself back out again. Like I said, I got tons of extra. So I'm not going to stress. It's really annoying when you don't have extra. Where, you know, you have to have a certain number on a vehicle because it's a command vehicle or some sort of special, like, historical unit. And then you screw up the transfer and you're like, do I cheese out on the uh, transfer or do I try to make my own transfer? I've, I've done that a bunch. Because I don't want to sit there and order a whole new sheet. And sometimes it takes, like, two weeks to get the sheet. The hell with that. I ain't got that kind of patience. It's a little crooked. I mean, infinitesimally. Alright, there we go. Okay, last chevron 
Is this gonna this other one gonna behave itself or do I Nope, you're still folded over on top of yourself. Alright, the hell with you. In comes a new transfer. The only problem is that this thing has not been soaking. Oh, the new one, so I may have to wait a second. So yeah, I mean I put my miniatures in a little finger bowl or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's the one that just doesn't want to behave itself, so you are banished. And now we're just trying to get this one off the transfer sheet. Let that soak for just a second. It's still ambush alley games. Okay, that's good. That's good that there's some continuity. I mean, it's always good, like, when GDW stopped publishing, well, stopped publishing, period, uh, to my knowledge. And, um, what is it, Free League Games? picked up or free league publishing picked up twilight 2000 it's all you know it's great when or like when panzer leader finally went out of print and eventually got picked up by multi-man publishing in like the early 80s or mid 80s when they basically didn't do anything with it i mean there's there's panzer blitz hill of death but eh, whatever i didn't really like it Yeah, that new transfer is going to be in there for a little while. Let me get the bad transfer out of here. Come on off of there. My people are watching. Yeah, I had these sitting before the, uh, soaking, I should say, before the stream started for quite a while. And now, of course, they're, the one that was in there to replace it uh, was not soaked. So, anyway. All right, uh, just so, so the grass does not uh, grow under our feet, I'm going to go ahead and put these tactical numbers on there. The tactical numbers you get in the Team Yankee box are kind of basic. Um, I don't have any problem with it, because if you get too specific with the transfers... Um, it really starts to, especially the tactical numbers, it really starts to uh, identify the unit. And then once you identify the unit too much, you can only play that those miniatures in certain games. So, yeah, it gets kind of weird. So I, I kind of like that they kept the uh, transfers kind of generic. And it goes more along the lines of what you see in the novel. Because, of course, it's Team Yankee. Um, the game is originally based on the novel. The novel kept things really kind of basic. So, I know we're kind of shooting through water here. But 21 is the first tank of 2nd Platoon. 22 is the 2nd tank of 2nd Platoon. Um, again, the transfers are made for Team Yankee of the novel. Where the Exos tank was number 55. A lot of armor guys out there are very quick to correct that. And they say that most of the time in the 80s and 90s, the Exos tank was number 65. 66 was always the commander. I used up my 66, obviously on my um, actual armored, my actual tank, my Abrams commander. So now I'm gonna use 55 to make this like the Exo of a cavalry uh, squadron of some kind. Or a cavalry troop. Again, these are Americans. So, in an American unit, an American cavalry unit, like 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment at 73 Easting, troop is the company. In a British unit, troop is often the platoon. So, just before, uh, you know, I get corrected on that as well. Different armies, uh, different nations, I should say, use this the terminology... Uh, in different ways. Okay, this other uh, transfer is finally coming off the sheet. Of course, it wants to stick to the glass. There we go. And meanwhile, my tactical numbers are already soaking, so... Out 
that around a little bit. Cool. All right, so that's all the chevrons on there. Hello, Rasmus. How you doing? Rasmus, we're just about done with our Radleys. I'm just putting some transfers on there. I've got the Chevrons on there. I'm letting them dry for just a second. I'm going to start tactical numbers now. Once the all are on there, we're going to apply a little bit of matte varnish to not only kind of protect them and glue them in place a little bit better, but of course take off that god-awful shine that you often get with transfers. Okay, gotta be super careful here. Wish me luck, guys. Here we go. Try to do it on camera. Yeah, my girlfriend's been out of town for like 10 days, which I find almost 10 days, which I find to be like the perfect length of time. Um, long enough where she's out of my freaking hair for a while, get some peace and quiet in the house, but not too long where I, you know, like right about the time I actually start to miss her, uh, she's on her way back. And we're right out of town again, um, heading up to my dad's uh, for the 4th of July, oh, for the 4th of July weekend. Oh, don't you do that. Hold on, my other 55 just totally folded over on itself. Oh, damn you, you bastard. That's really annoying. I've got two extras. So it's okay if this one is ruined, but... Oh, it just fixed. All right, now I have to flip it over. I know you guys can't see any of this. Pardon me for that. All right, I saved it. You know, you can always come off onto the vehicle. I know some people do it directly off the paper. They slide it right off the paper onto the, the miniature. I've tried it. I've gotten it to work a couple times. It's probably like the easier way. But... I always find like I need three arms when I do it that way. I have to... Uh... You know, hold the miniature, hold the brush, and then hold the piece of paper. All very small things while I'm trying to get the transfer on there. Which is kind of a pain. So the brush that the miniature's on, I don't use a knife because too often it sticks to the knife. And then sometimes with the knife you accidentally scratch the paint. I get one of these, uh, these very thin sort of knife edge brushes that you use for dry brushing sometimes, like detail airbrushing. And I have pretty luck. I have pretty good luck with that. 
All right, so there is my XO. I would have made him a commander, but I don't have any more 65s, or I should say 66s. So there is my XO of some, you know, probably armored cavalry troop, second armored cavalry regiment. Oh, for love God, we got friggin' spam in the chat. Damn it. Sorry about that, guys. I will delete that stuff later. Rasmus says, I normally do it the same way you do, uh, but without a camera. Yeah, the, ca <laughs> the camera always adds like plus one difficulty to your role there. Uh, yeah, one of these days we're going to have to get a mod. So that stuff like that can be deleted in real time. Right here is second platoon leader number 21. Never a dull moment. Something always going on. If I don't have technical difficulties, we have spam. I'd rather almost have trolls. At least a troll, you can curse them out. I, mean, I can't really yell at him. He, he's just a robot. He's, he's not, there's not like anyone's in there physically typing that right now. There is 21. There is first platoon leader. Ready to go. Minus uh, some matte varnish. So troop leader and first platoon leader. Next, vehicle number 22. probably take this opportunity to say if anyone's interested in being a mod for the sit rep podcast um, <laughs> apparently we could use one there's the first number 22 
22 is all set. Once I get some varnish on there. Three down, two to go. Um, Rasmus says, I need to put some shoulder badges on those three Infinity Cyber Ninjas. Man, once you start talking about putting uh, transfers on, like, infantry figures. Um, I know you're working with a bigger scale there, but, like, these guys who do 28mm Saga or some other kind of Dark Age or Viking era stuff, and they'll sit there and just, you know, spend a week. Um, or, like, some of uh, Panzer Kaput's Baron's War. Oh, it's stuck in the brush, brush, brush bristles. Come on off of there. Um... On you. I lost my train of thought. I was concentrating. All right. Uh, they'll start putting uh, shield transfers. That's what I'm like. Oh my god. It's bad enough doing it on vehicles. Now you're going to start doing it on like individual people. And there are people who like put like shoulder flashes on like the 82nd Airborne. And you know, I'm like, oh my god. I guess because those aren't even like. Oops. Turd came off. This is well, you're kind of in the way. Ah. Riding a little high there, buddy. Make sure this is actually on camera. God, I swear the streaming hobby streaming is going to turn me into like a chameleon where like their eyes are in two like independent turrets. I can watch the, the miniature with one eye and take a look at my stream with the other make sure I'm in focus and camera and frame. All right, there's the first 23 done. Oh my god, here we go. More, more! Please, Naked HD, tell us more about it. We, we love to hear all about it. Absolutely. Go bother some nasty, teeny bopper Twitch streamer playing Fortnite or something. I don't know. That doesn't work with us. Actually, we almost never have problems with uh, spam. We've been pretty lucky, I guess. That's a little too high. I wonder if I. It's no big deal. I'm just going to try to move this a little bit. If it's made up its mind to stay where it is, that's fine. I don't want to tear the transfer. Okay, there we go. That's better. Um, okay, well, so Rasmus asks, which panel should it be on the top or the bottom? Um... That's not the right number anyway, so it doesn't matter. You literally cannot be right historically. On this one, it's on the bottom, it's on this side, because as you can see, the panels are very different. The Bradley is not a symmetrical vehicle. So they're going on the upper panels on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, they're going on... The oh, shoot, I see what you're saying. Oh, you know what? You're absolutely right. It may be too late for this one. Let me see. If not, it's fine. I don't care. It's, it's close enough. But let's see if I can get away with it. Hey, there we go.
Cool, thanks, Rasmus. Save me from a small mistake there. All right, so 23 is ready to go. Uh, Jen says, if you show me how to, I'll mod. Yeah, that's cool, Jen. I mean, it'd be cool if it was somebody here, because sometimes the stream's at 7, sometimes it's at 8. I don't want to screw up anyone's whole evening. Um, I know you can't do it now, because you're not, you know, but it's fine. And again, normally it's not a problem. Pretty much all you have to do is log in as SITREP Podcast, which means I have to give out passwords and full admin access and stuff like that. If I was a little more um, sophisticated, I could probably do it myself. The only problem is that you all would have to watch me do it. Because what you're seeing right now is my, just my webcam. Which means in order for me to access the computer. So, okay, now the way to do it is either a second computer or a split screen. Okay, spoiler alert, split screen's not going to work because I don't have two monitors here at my hobby desk. I, I don't, I barely have one. The only place I have is kind of split screen is for my work office. Like my actual day job and, and work and hobby, or you know, like work and, and sit rep never meet. You know, I, I have to, I can't use, nor would I ever want to, uh, use my equipment for their stuff or use their equipment for sit rep podcast stuff. I can't keep taking apart my, my home office every time I run the stream. So it would have to be another computer, which is doable. I just don't have one with me right now. And you know, like I say, Jen wanted to do it. Jen would just log on as sit rep podcast and we would uh, figure out how to do this kind of thing. Oh, I just totally ruined that last. It's the last transfer and I just totally destroyed it. That's not coming back. That one is totally foobard. Oh no. That's okay, I got plenty of extra. Alright, I need another 24. The problem is, again, now I'm going to have to let it soak again. That's annoying. Right? There's no way to save that one. Let me... It's not just folded over on itself. It's like wrinkled up in a ball. Come on out of there, you. You know you want to. I appreciate your patience, everyone. Ah, I saved it. Wow. That thing was wrinkled up like a like a ball of tinfoil a second ago. Ugh. Again, I got plenty of extras, but it would literally just be like waiting here on stream for five minutes, waiting for the stupid thing to soak in the water. Right or left, my own question. Actually, you, you were right, uh, Rasmus. On this one here, I had that 23 on the bottom panel. When No, it should be on the top panel, even on the uh, left-hand side. So, yeah. Okay. That is all the transfers now on there. I might come back later. I'd have to make either make my own transfers or maybe I'll buy some more. If I wanted to get a little bit more specific... With the uh, units, um, American military vehicles have very specific unit um, transfers right there on the underside. Like it'll say like the division, the brigade, not usually the brigade, the, the division, the regiment over here is the battalion and the company. And it's, yeah, it gets really detailed, tiny, tiny numbers. 
they probably didn't put them on here because 15 millimeter you would never see them they're also on like the underside of the vehicle so you'd almost never see them on a real gaming table and again it really narrows down uh, the applicability of your miniatures going forward all right so just to quickly round out the stream i'm just going to slap a little bit of matte varnish on here and then call it a day because i have to log on to naked dash hot hd xyz i'm really interested in what they're selling i'm absolutely uh you know keen to uh go look at their cheap shit i can't wait Actually, do I want to use this brush? I have a better brush. I'm sure I have a better brush for this. Oh yeah, definitely. Oop, actually, nope, maybe not. know how to do this these aren't these streams aren't meant to be like tutorials half the time I should be watching your tutorials not the other way around all right so when that dries that uh, liquid shine or that paper shine from the transfer uh, will be 95% gone uh, this army painter uh, wash, uh, not wash, uh, in fact, just the opposite, anti-shine matte varnish uh, is actually really good. One of these days, I'm going to uh, have to order, like, a huge pile of it. Like, not kidding, like, maybe seven or eight of these bottles. Because I've got a whole case of stuff up there. And a lot of it was put together before I was using matte varnish. I've got literally, I don't even know um, how many are up there. I used to keep count, then I lost count. I never regained a count. There are 15 shelves on there. Each shelf has at least, at least uh, 50 vehicles on it. Some of them have almost 100. So I've got between 800 and 1600 models up there. Some of them are so bad. I still have my very first miniature ever painted. Uh, some Mark IVs that I had to convert from the old short barreled L24 ones, the Mark IV E's to the longer route, either like F2s or Gs. It doesn't matter because my miniature literally has a finishing nail for a gun barrel. And I painted it with a Q-tip. Because I didn't even have brushes yet. That was like the week I joined Beasts of War back in the day. I had a bunch of stuff uh, ordered and on the way, but I, I wanted to start painting something like before it arrived. I wasn't patient. And I had some old, the old 15 millimeter miniatures game, uh, Axis and Allies, not the board game that most people are probably familiar with. I had some of that old cheap plastic hanging around. I wanted to convert some to different units.
think that's it, guys. They all have the matte varnish on them. And uh, again, the matte varnish is still drying. But those are my Bradleys. Oop, bring them in a little bit closer. So, of course, those are going to go with the, uh, the Abrams. I got a bunch of those. And that's my U.S. Armored Force. U.S. Army Armored Force. Um, I've got another whole pile of Marine Corps stuff I've shown a hundred times, so I won't break that off the shelf again. Also, I did that Marine Corps stuff. Oh, Lord, when was that? Uh, a year and uh, almost a year and a half ago. Damn. And honestly, it, it doesn't look as good as this Army stuff now. So that's the problem with going back to projects and continuing. Your old favorite stuff is no longer your new hotness. Um, it's kind of old and busted. Like <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 yeah, these are my old M60s. Now, of course, the tank is supposed to be old and busted. I'm talking about the way it's painted. Um, it doesn't look too bad, I guess. Uh, next to the Abrams. Uh, one thing I want to try and experiment with is whether or not I can change the color on those damned uh, ERA panels. I'm not happy with them. And of course, I got plenty of infantry. Let me grab some real quick. Now, these can be kind of interchangeable. Oh, I got some Iraqis with us. Oh, Iraqis, get out of here. So, plenty of uh, infantry that you can use. No, I don't base my guys in the Flames of War four-man units because I don't always play uh, Flames of War slash Team Yankee. In fact, I rarely do. Um, I keep them off the base. It makes them a little pain in the ass to handle, as you've just seen. But at the same time, now I'm free to use whatever system I want. Uh, most recently, I use it in a little bit of a system, a little bit of, a, uh, of an update to uh, Battle System. So that new Cold War game that Chris Long has been putting in our Discord, uh, that might get a dust off. I might, uh, I might you know, try using that, but who knows? Because the Battlefront expand that's not an expansion, it's me just kind of kit bashing uh, Battlefront, I should say Battle Group, sorry, to, to a 1991 uh, thing. That works fine for T-55s versus M60s. You literally just keep marching the, the tables forward. Um, however, once you get into you know more advanced stuff, U.S. Army M1s, Bradleys with tow missiles versus T-72s, uh, I might have a little bit more of an issue there. Yeah, fifth column. Uh, look, there are two uh, two Iraqi spies. Actually, they probably just surrendered. Um, no, please don't hurt us. We already gave up. And why are you carrying your weapons? Uh, we're not. We're, we're throwing them down right now. We're sorry. All right, guys, so thanks very much for coming out to our stream. Super appreciate it. Um, our Sunday streams are usually pretty good. Our Wednesday streams, again, because it's a weird time of day. Uh, sometimes we don't always have the biggest audience. So whenever you know people do come out to our Wednesday streams, we definitely appreciate it. Please remember to like the video if you like the video. I mean, you don't have to, obviously. But if you do like the video, give the video a like. It actually really does help us out. Uh, I'm not here just, you know, being a thirsty bitch. It, it actually does help us out. Um, hell, give it a dislike if you want. I don't care. Uh, just interact with the video somehow. It actually gets us on the algorithm. Um, comment, share, so on and so forth. Of course, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. In the meantime, this is a Riskiny Gym. Thanking everybody one more time on behalf of the Sit Rep Podcast. We will not be streaming live on Sunday. I will be out of town. However, we will have some content up. Meanwhile, I have some raw recordings from our friend Piotr, our friend and teammate Piotr. So there's some more Piotr and uh, some more Piotr Team Yankee content coming out uh, in the coming week, maybe two. So keep an eye out for that as well. In the meantime, this is Risky and Jim. We are rounds complete. Tango Mike for watching as always. And for now, we're taking off. 
we'll be in touch very soon. Have a great week. And if I don't talk to you, ten, uh, if I don't talk to you until then, have a great weekend. Have a great holiday. And we'll see everybody on the other side. Take care, everybody. And um, be safe. <laughs>